given that both tribes' characters had been independently chosen to be bug wizards. Well, bug magic. I mean, we've got, you know, you can mysticize anything you want with that stuff. So given that there's the overlap in religion as well across the alleged boundary of free versus Amazon tribes, I'm like, okay, there's got to be content there. I mean, it's dumb not to play it up that their bug magic, you know, talks to each other. Um, but how important is it for those other connections in the immediate situation? Or is that just something we can treat as a way that those characters are, you know, more alike than different? Um, I held that off. Because then we got to look at the other weirdness, and believe me, there is plenty. Um, first, uh, Leonidas, the half-snake, has met his future self. And that turned out to be early in the lifelines. That happened a while ago. And Helma said that's how he got all political. His future self told him to turn his, you know, to stop being so arty, basically. You know, just arty. And, you know, turn your art to these these other purposes. So his future self told him to do that, and he, he went for it. Um, there's also this, uh, he also idolizes a teacher, and, all, and no teacher had cropped up otherwise in the lifeline. So I either have a choice that this is a teacher that he knows about and just idolizes, or idealizes, not idolizes, idealizes from, bef from afar, or... Uh, I can make that teacher, you know, this, this character, this future self. And I said, you know, let's, let's do that for reasons that I'll point out in a minute, because over in, uh, Greg's character's lifelines, they, he, his lifelines talk about having met this, this, you know, uh, this, this incomprehensible entity, um, who has taught him things. And so he says, yeah, there's like this non-Euclidean weirdness thing you know, that teaches me stuff too. And that happened here in my lifelines. And I'm looking at that and I'm going, teaching stuff, you know, weird entity to this tribesman. Is that the same guy? Is the future self messing with the tribal end of this political issue as well? Perhaps through, you know, the bug magic or not. But, you know, is that, is that, is that the same guy? And I kind of swallowed hard on that one. I said, okay, that's three times I've said, and that's the same guy. But it worked so nicely. You know, otherwise we have two entities. One is the future self um, who's busy with this other thing. There's that business about a song, right? That a mysterious song has recently emerged in which Leonidas is like, hey, who knows that about me? You know, sort of stuff. Well, who else would know that stuff about you except your future self? So... The song is obviously something that the future self is continuing to supply into the past. And then we have, so that means, you know, it wasn't just a one-off for the, for the future self. And so I'm going, all right, well, if it's not just a one-off, then that means, you know, it's been doing stuff. And we've got this otherworldly teaching entity over there with Greg's character. So, so be it, so be it. And I haven't even talked about the freaking relic yet, right? Well, thank God, in this case, the relic was not tagged by the lifelines as being powerful. Like with the story with Helma and Noah, the, the lifelines had told us that the relic is, you know, throbbing with ancient secrets and power, right? Magical powers. Hitherto unknown magical powers is what it said. And so, you know, the, the relic is like, she's going to blow and, or whatever they do in the, whatever case. But in this case, it doesn't. It's just culturally important. Or rather, unless I inject a magical component to it, it doesn't have to have one, according to what is being supplied as information. And in this case, I'm like, whew, we don't really have to make it be a player in this. But it's important to everybody else. I mean, the big crux is transporting it from this place to that place. Everybody's focused on that right now. The outlaw's focused on it. The... You know, Leonidas is focused on it. The future self is deeply focused on it. You know, it's it's important. And then the the other cousin is, you know, hooked into this as part of being related to that cousin. I mean, it's... And also having caused trouble against the Empire. Probably in some way about it. So, although the spear isn't going to do anything, everybody cares. So, that's what I'm realizing as I'm looking across this sheet. Just, uh, you know, checking it out across everything. 
um, and writing in stuff, you know, as I review it and discover it, um, writing in stuff that, uh, you know, makes sense as I go. So at this point, I'm able to say, all right, where did they say they were or didn't say they were? And, uh, and how does that relate if we're taking the spear somewhere important to the Empire? Um, and so we find that um, Ross's character, Thekmesa, who I've got marked here with a here with a T, uh, lives with the bug folk, but has gotten into some sort of escapade with this outlaw whom he named, Ross named Diorix. And um, so is, is seeking funds, you know, that's part of how they got into more trouble with Diorix is seeking funds in order because the bug wife has become pregnant. Um, and then we have as well, uh, the, I found a part of the map where the free tribes and the Amazon characters, which I had already knew that I was always going to have some sort of interesting, uh, uh, that they would always be any, any spot with the tribes, there's going to be both. Right. So I picked one of those and I said, all right, well, Ukmek, who is Greg's character, um, is, is going there to the, 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 wherever that is. And I looked around on the map and I said, well, look, you know, I've never done anything with that great big obelisk in the middle of the whole thing, which I consider to be sort of imperial or imperial important, you know, like maybe the empire gets to be the empire because they control or, you know, basically own, have taken ownership of this obelisk. So taking the crystal spear there is a big deal. Um, but somebody's trying to destroy. I mean, it's part of the essence of the Crystal Spear as rolled that someone's trying to destroy it. Some faction in, is attempting to destroy it. So he's got to, you know, take care of it on this journey and keep it from them from destroying it. And it seems to me as though the pro-imperial free tribesmen um, would be, you know, an extreme version of them would definitely be that in that zone that matches perfectly with everything that Greg had written about the death of the cousin, uh, the smearing of the cousin's reputation, um, the fact that he had mixed, he had a, a identity mix up with a cousin, right? Maybe the, maybe the free tribes actually still think that the cousin is alive and that it, it's him. Um, and so he's basically, you know, on the lowdown, he's not going to go the, the easy route to the, obelisk so i can look at it and say oh the easy route just goes right there that's how everybody gets the obelisk you know i would be going through the, the the this little spot here with that little tiny island to you know hop through and it's all imperial controlled territory there so you know if you just be a normal person and go visit the obelisk if you want to no he's gonna have to go through these other islands near the bug folk and it seems to and, and here i'm thinking these areas are less easily uh, managed by the empire and glory be, there's little, there's a nice solid sized island right there that they could both have ended up in. So, Ukmik for his reasons, Thekmesa for hers. A good place to kind of lay low a little bit while the Empire is like, we have a warrant out on you. So, all right, right there. And the Orcs is going to be there too. I'm thinking we could go full den of iniquity kind of with this place, right? You know, scum and villainy, the works. All right, excellent. Well, that puts us too with Leonidas, though, all the way over there in the Imperial City, sitting pretty, not going anywhere. So that's where I got. I looked at this and said, all right, well, I got a free tribesman going there, and Leonidas is sitting in the Imperial City. There, The connections are mystical. The future self, right, you know, is involved in both spots. And um, it may even be that, you know, Leonidas might even never come face to face with them, and that all of his political drama actually create situ situational impact on them and vice versa, right? That, that could be okay. Leonidas has plenty of personal drama and stuff to cope with, you know, on his own. So, you know, it could be that we basically see the same story from two different locations. Could be. Well, anyway, that's where I ended up with. I ended up with these two locations instead of, a, you know, all, all come together. Oh, we're all right here sort of thing. That's fine. Well, looking at this, I'm saying, all right, well, clearly my notes are scattered all over the place, and there's a bunch of stuff I'm not taking into account. So what, where does that bring us? That brings us to my, re, my, my setup and, or my rewrite of the file. And as you can see, uh, now I have big, bold text in red, which is my signal to myself of saying, and what the hell, right? How does this work? So I summarized it you know, slightly differently here. The table is more elaborate. 
realizing characters that I don't have names for. I'm also remembering there's characters here that aren't necessarily as tied in or designated as active by certain goals or anything like that, or who are active as goals, but aren't directly tied in. So I list that uh, the beggar artist friend for Leonidas that he wants to sort of politicize, um, that uh, the, the, the romantic interest for that character, who's also the outlaw's romantic interest, uh, what's up with the, the pregnant bug wife back in, you know, bug folk land. Um, and uh, then also we've got that missing sister, the, the uh, mentally disabled, or not sure if she's disabled so much as uh, difficult in any number of ways. Um, he had written her as having gone a little uh, more and more unstable, you know, regarding her militancy. So, okay. A um, couple of other things. I had to suddenly worry about weirdness that had been arbitrarily introduced by a player that didn't come from the life of the past, that the player's enthusiasm about weirdness had kind of ramped up. One is that Thekmesa is a woman, and her wife is a bug folk woman, and that the bug folk wife has become pregnant, and Ross even had written, like, you know, magic with a question mark right there. Well, I kind of squinted at that. That's extra weirdness. Do we want extra weirdness? Not sure. Um, the the constraint was that, you know, your lover needs financial support, extra financial support right now. That's the what happened in Lifeline. And Ross has interpreted this as a pregnancy. And since we're talking about the two women, uh, Ross is kind of like, yeah, and whatever. It's weird, right? Maybe there's magic. Um, so that's one thing. And then the other one uh, had to do with the... Um, the, the question of this beggar artist friend who, the more I looked at it, Helma had specifically said that Leonidas was very much about supporting this beggar artist friend and getting his talents, quote, you know, politically oriented. Um, he's, he's a graffiti artist, right? And so I'm thinking, okay, that's, that's peripheral. And, and also there's this woman. I mean, who is she? Is this going to be all about her? Is this a big deal in this? Or, you know, how much of all these three? I mean, we've got these three characters. Oh, and the missing sister, too. So that's four characters, three of them female. Am I just fading them into the background? Am I going to play them? And I said, the best thing to do is to be responsive about it. Um, play enough so that they're present. And then whatever events, whatever role-playing sort of, if I find, oh, well, this character becomes more active. So we're going to say that they are not uh, currently I mean, the, the sister in particular um, is not currently here. And how active the others are is going to be very much a matter of plausibility of play. Not anticipated importance for play so much as should something kind of, you know, make that NPC step up and become more active, I can see that happening. But right now, somebody like the, the outlaw, Diorx, is clearly, you know, going to be more proactive. Diorx is going to have opinions in the first moments of play. That's straightforwardly the case. Um, so uh, so I, I had to think about that, and I had to think a little bit about um, the, the whole uh, political issue, which is not... Um, which is, is not been articulated yet. Oh, yes, and the bug magic. Is that actually tied into the future self and all that stuff? I actually decided to fade that back a little bit. We might as well just let the bug magic and the cultural aspect and the religion aspect kind of all blend into their own thing and not necessarily have to make it all fit. This is where I was hitting my limits of... You see, you can make everything fit. You can make up whatever you need to or sand off the edges of whatever you need to so that every single thing that has been textually provided is all connected. Personally, I think that takes on a point where what you're ending up with is not an asymmetric, jagged thing with holes in it so that it is full of potential for play. 
but instead has sort of become a squished sphere. You had to change everything and smooth off everything so much to make it all work together that what you have now is complete unto itself and, frankly, kind of boring at that point. Um, and so it's better, in my opinion, to hit your own limit, whatever it may be, and say, and that doesn't have to get. It can be present, but it doesn't have to become significantly tied to these other aspects. So this is where, in looking at the sheet, there's questions like, you know, is the weirdness part of that? And I'm kind of like, eh, let's, let's even say on the sheet here yeah, that the bug magic is not connected. I even say, oh my God, right? Not connected? How can that be? So um, I assigned names to characters that didn't have them, uh, races, for example, deciding, like, you know, what, what is Diorx an Imperial or who or what? Makes sense to me that he is. Um, making sure I wasn't missing stuff on the sheets. That's what this is. Um, now, here's an important question that remained. Um, I hooked together all the political stuff and said, yeah, that all makes sense, you know, as, as a piece. Um, in fact, frighteningly so. And I say, all right, where are we going? And I wrote down, okay, to the obelisk, as I said. Um, and so what's going on here? Is this like a historical relationship of the empire to the tribes? I mean, is this a crux moment, historical crux moment of one ethnically centric empire, you know, dealing with a diverse and partly co-opted, partly non-co-opted, you know, group of tribesmen. Wow, I thought to myself, that is heavy. That is, that's serious business. Um, I mean, I already played a fairly pointed fantasy version of Native American issues with Undiscovered. I mean, is that what I'm doing with, you know, granted, all these heartbreakers are deeply ethnically and historically loaded through the lens of, fantasy tropes and so it's kind of hard to avoid them when you play but i mean I, i'm i'm not sure i'm like qualified to be the guy to you know play anti-colonial tribal nuances through the eyes of many tribal characters it's i'm overstepping a little line for myself here actually so I, you know, I'm, I have notes here that is like, so can, can we make this part a little lighter? Just a little lighter? Um, and so that's where we ended with the, the, the sheet two.